Well, hi, FPC. Uh, I did a devotional a little while ago on Isaiah 6 and promised that I wanted to continue going through that passage, and I'd like to do that today. Uh, let's remember where we were as we were looking at Isaiah 6. We looked at the first three verses of Isaiah, of Isaiah 6, and here we see Isaiah having a vision of God. The circumstances is that the king of Judah, remember that Israel was divided or the, the Jewish people were divided into two nations. One was Israel and one was Judah. The king of Judah, who had been very successful, very prosperous um, in many, many ways, has just died. So the people are in a time of mourning, a time of confusion, a time of uncertainty about their future. And what God gives them in that moment is not so much a detailed plan, but a greater vision of, of himself. And I argued that that is what we need at this moment as well, is we need a greater picture of God. So let's reread the first three verses. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. But as we now continue in Isaiah 6, we see what happens to us when we get this bigger picture of God that we so desperately need. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for me? And then I said, Here am I, send me. Now this passage is famous because of these last words, Here am I, send me. But we tend to, to miss the significance of those words in this passage. Up to this point, Isaiah has been deeply concerned about the sinfulness and corruption of his people and has, has bemoaned the fact that his people were called to be God's representatives into the world, but how can they fulfill that mission when they themselves are corrupt and sinful? And so now Isaiah is, is picking up the challenge to go make the changes that are necessary to bring the message that is necessary to unleash his people. Uh, you can read the rest of this chapter to see how that's going to turn out because God tells them up front that uh, they're not going to listen to you. But that's not the point. I've called you to a task. You're to be faithful, and I will deal with the results. And that's a good message for us as well. But what prompts him to, to take up this assignment? Well, it's the bigger picture of God that is immediately followed by a more accurate picture of himself. You see, he says in verse 5, Woe is me, this is a cry of distress. I am lost. I love how some translations translate this, I am undone. It's literally, I'm destroyed. I'm blown apart. When sinful fallen man comes in the presence of a holy God, sinfulness cannot stand. And that's what you see going on as the verse continues. He says, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Isn't it interesting that he so closely identifies himself with his people that he has been bemoaning are corrupt and sinful. And I think he focuses on lips because as, as part of his concern going into these chapters has been the corrupt speech uh, and, and the way they've talked about God and others that has been uh, very inappropriate. And so I think that is specifically why he is, is focusing on lips. But of course, God doesn't leave him in that moment in a beautiful picture of what we experience through the cross. You have an angel that touches his mouth, touches his lips with a coal from an altar and says, your guilt is taken away, your sin atoned for. I think it's interesting that he touches his lips because that's what Isaiah has identified with his sinfulness. 
And this act, this gracious act of God has provided for Isaiah to be able to stand in the presence of God with his sin atoned for and his guilt taken away. And that is what we have through Christ. And I think Isaiah puts his hand up to go on the assignment because he has come face to face with the reality of how magnificent God is, which has caused him to come face to face with the reality of how sinful he is. And then he has experienced the unimaginable grace of God, and that propels him to go. And the same thing should happen to us, even as we are dealing with things like the coronavirus and social isolation. We come face to face with the magnificent wonder of God that causes us to see ourselves more clearly. It causes us to see our need and our appreciation for his grace grows even more, and that compels us to want to reach out to those around us. I want to wrap up by looking uh, at a prayer. This is a prayer that was written by the Puritans. It's from a book called The Valley of Vision. And I think it is a wonderful follow-up to Isaiah chapter 6 and could be a great model for us as we pray during this time. The prayer is called The Deeps. This is how it goes. Lord Jesus, give me a deeper repentance. What a thing to ask for. Give me a deeper repentance, a horror of sin, a dread of its approach. Help me chastely or purely to flee it and jealously to resolve that my heart shall be yours alone. Give me a deeper trust that I may lose myself to find myself in you, the ground of my rest, the spring of my being. Give me a deeper knowledge of yourself as Savior, Master, Lord, and King. Give me deeper power in private prayer, more sweetness in your word, more steadfast grip on its truth. Give me deeper holiness in speech, thought, action, and let me not seek moral virtue apart from you. Plow deep in me, great Lord, heavenly husbandman, or it's a word for farmer or gardener, that my being may be a tilled field, the roots of grace spreading far and wide until you alone are seen in me. Your beauty golden like summer harvest, your fruitfulness as autumn plenty. I have no master but you, no law but your will, no delight but yourself, no wealth but what you give, no good but what you bless, no peace but what you bestow. I am nothing but what you make me. I have nothing but what I receive from you. I can be nothing but what grace adorns me. Quarry my, quarry my deep, dear Lord, and then fill me to overflowing with living water. I wonder if those are the sorts of things that we ask for when we're in a time of distress or a time of concern. But I do think it is a great model for us. And let me just walk you through what I think are, are for me, very instructive ways as I look to pray during this time. He prays for deeper repentance. Even his repentance is a gift from God. And he asks not for a shallow repentance, but a repentance that, that runs deep. And, and if you remember from that section, it's even a, a horror from sin, even as that sin approaches. He asks for greater trust in and knowledge of God. He asks for greater power in prayer and in Bible study and in the holiness of his speech. He asks for God's deep transforming work so that only God is seen in him or in us. He asked that he would have no master and no provider other than Jesus. And he asked for God's deep transforming work and filling of his life, or filling of his life with the life of God, with uh, his living water. And I think that's a marvelous pattern for us, whether we pray this whole thing or not, but what a what a great list to look at and say, these are wonderful things to guide me as I pray for myself and for those around me, for our church and for the community uh, during this time of crisis. I, I hope you're well. Know that this is how I am praying for you, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.